I put them in there just to keep their mobility limited and to keep them from getting into trouble. All right, guys, welcome back. Another podcast episode for you. Um, we're going to, you know, I've, I've been kicking around like ideas for the podcast because as I'm driving around, as, as I'm on the move, I get different ideas. I get, you guys know that a lot of the mess or a lot of the topics that we cover come from listeners, which I, which I like doing. Um, I like it because I feel like if someone ha- if one person asks the question, I do think that answering it, I- I'm going to answer it as, and I do the best I can to try to answer as many questions as possible that come through. And so, um, I am still, if you're listening and you're going, yeah, but I have a question into you and I haven't heard back, I am still playing catch up. So, um, I go back and it just because it might be a week or two ago that you sent it to me, doesn't mean I'm not going to get to it. Um, I don't mind if it's been that long for someone to just send a little message, uh, hey, just checking in or whatever, because it gets back up to the top of whatever it is, whether it be my email or messaging. But it is, and I, I wish I could be better at it, um, but I just, I do struggle to keep up on all of the different platforms that we are, are communicating with people on. So, and I'm not doing it, I'm not saying it as an excuse, but I am saying it to be honest. Um, sometimes I will miss stuff. Sometimes I, it just takes me a while to get back. I do my best to get back to every single person. So I, a little thing for you, and I've had a couple of people do it. I hate it when people are real, um, I don't hate it, but I, I get frustrated with it when people are short and when they kind of are snotty about it, you know, too busy to answer my question. That kind of stuff kind of bugs me because yes, I maybe am too busy to answer it right then. Um, but I am going to try to get back to everybody. So most of the time, I rarely see that. And I thank you guys uh, for all the patience that I get from, from folks. Um, I think sometimes I, I use it as kind of a joke, but it's not really, um, you know, patience is important in life in dog training. There's no question about it. It's, it's a, the most under, one of the most underrated skills a, a handler can have. And it, transfers and translates into all walks of life i think like i just think that i've i've become more patient with other things because of training and i i don't think that that's a bad thing i think we we all probably could use a little bit more in our lives um patience that is and you know i've been thinking about it emails and stuff recently because i i i we've got like a i've got this prioritized list of stuff that I, I try to deal with and I, and I think most people listening to this will relate to it so that's why I share it I'm not I'm not sharing it to sound whiny I'm sharing it because I think it's very relatable to most people we have a lot of things going on in our lives these days and s- setting stuff up prioritizing things is necessary because uh, it just everything can't get done and I think everything can't get done at the pace that some of us want it done or others want it done. So I was thinking about it for whatever reason recently about the impacts like emails. Like if I don't respond to a business email that's important within hours, not just days, but like within hours, like it can really create issues. And I'm thinking, how did we do this before email? Like used to send letters. I remember working in an office where it was like we waited a few days to get letters back and forth, but there were formal processes that had to take place and now there's you know documents that can be signed through through the computer and all that stuff. So, it's just we have become such a society that just I, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a great improvement in a lot of things. Um, it's technology that is helping, but I also think it it doesn't make more hours in the day or more minutes in the day. So, there is things that do get pushed. And, and in reality, what I say something being pushed, taking a little bit of time to respond to certain things, um, man, it's still way faster than it was not that long ago. So I appreciate the patience and, and we're, we, I am working on um, ways to try to streamline that a little bit, but I just don't know that it'll ever be as perfect as I would hope. So um, 
With that being said, I am gonna today we're gonna talk about some, a couple questions that have come through. Uh, they are Insta these are two are gonna be Instagram questions. Uh, Facebook I'm behind on. So Instagram I tend to be a little bit quicker on. Facebook I'm a little bit behind on. I'm not on Facebook as much as I am Instagram. Um, it's not as it's a little more cumbersome for me. Uh, so for lots of different reasons. But so I the, these are questions that came through not too long ago. One one was last Tuesday. One was Tuesday, and today is only. Thursday. Thursday. So this one's really on a couple days. And the other one was a couple days too. So um, responded to them late last night and um, I'll read them to you because I think they're good. They're short. There's, I'm going to do two of them, I think, because they're not real long. And this is going to be a little, probably a little bit shorter episode, but that's okay. Um, this one was a good question and it's been on my mind a little bit. Um, I get questions about it, for, I would say fairly regularly, not, not, not that not that often, I guess, because it's not something that um, I really put out there and push or promote by any means. But it is definitely a, a day-to-day -day thing. It's something that I use with some regularity. It's, re it's regarding crates and kennels. Um, so the question is, if you don't mind, could you share with me what type of dog kennels you prefer for traveling? Thanks in advance. I love the videos. So I responded back to him, and I, you know, I do think there's some key keys there. So I use crates. I use crates. You call them crates, you call them kennels, whatever you want to call them. But I use them. Um, I've got two dogs that sleep in them now. Callie still sleeps in one and Chief is sleeping in one. Uh, they're right behind me right now. They're, they're literally laying behind me and then the other three dogs are on dog beds. Uh, two are on a dog bed and one's curled up next to my feet. So um, I use the crate as a lot, especially with the puppy. And that's one of the topics that I'm, I've got on my list of podcasts is kind of give you an idea of what we're doing with Chief right now. Because Chief is a puppy that's about 10 weeks old right now. Maybe he's going to be 11, he might be 11 weeks, 10 or 11 weeks this week. Um, my son's dog, one of Spry's puppies, um, really nice little dog, but he spends a lot of time in the crate. And so the crate's an important part of this. And I, what what kind is, do I use, what type of kennel do I use and prefer for traveling is what the question was. And I want to make this clear. Um, I, you know, I don't put the dogs in crates when I travel, rarely. Now the puppy I do. So in this situation, um, with Chief, Chief is kind of small. I've got a real cheap, I've got like three different size, three or four different sizes of crates that are very inexpensive, like pet porter type um, brands. You know, they're just they're the they're, some of them are like cat cat crates. Really, they're little, and I use them when the puppies are little. And I think it's important to have crates match the size of the dog as they grow, because it it especially early on, because I think it helps us with the housebreaking portion of things, and it helps it so that the dog doesn't mess or have accidents. So the smaller the space, the less likely they are to have that accident. They just don't want to go in that, and they want to stay clean. They don't want to be in their mess. So the small, if they have a really big crate, it can be tempting to a dog to go to the back side of it or the front side of it and go to the bathroom and then just go lay on the other end. So we've got, I've got three or four different sizes of small kennels that Chief has been riding in the back. He, I've got a crew cab pickup truck. I'll take a crate small one put it on the floor in the back of my behind my driver's seat so it can't move around the, the seat is flipped down and it just kind of wedges right in there and i kennel him in there for for travel because if i because i just don't trust him I, he can't wander he'll wander around back there he'll chew on stuff he'd get into things so um he might waddle around and have an accident so we i always put him in a crate when i'm traveling with the with a young dog now callie who callie came to me when she was about a year old she never rode in a crate. Um, she was old enough that I could develop some trust, but I didn't put her. So my dogs ride on the floor of the of the truck. They don't ride on the seats. Um, they ride on the floor. So my older dogs, and if you watch our Instagram stories, you'll see it traveling. I oftentimes send some pictures or share some pictures of it. But my older dogs, I have three of them, and they'll ride on the floor of the back of the crew cab. I'll flip the, it's kind of a split bench seat. I'll flip the, longer one typically my my daughter's uh, car seat or baby seat thing is in the one single part so I don't flip that one up I flip the other side up so the three dogs are on the floor they curl up and then they ride wherever we're going they sleep typically um, and then in that case I'll just put the kennel on the other side so it would be on the passenger side at the feet of Lillian's chair 
That's how my scenario would be with those dogs. With Callie, I, I do now, but when I first started, I never let her ride in the back seat on the floor because I didn't know her well enough. And I was afraid that there could be, there are some things down there under the seat that the dog could chew on if they want to. And if she's behind me, I'm not keeping an eye on her. So I don't want to risk the idea of her chewing on anything. So what she got was she got passenger seat floor. So she's right there, I can see her. So she laid on the floor of the passenger seat and she did just fine there. And, and now I've developed enough trust and confidence with her that she can ride in the back floor as well. Um, Bella, a dog that we recently trained, you know, she's two years old now, but we had her from 10 weeks on until she was about, what was she, about 20 months like when, when she went home. Um, in January, I guess she went home. She was around 20 months, I think. So she, <laughs> I bought a new truck last year and I put her in the same spot that, that Callie rides. And I left her in the truck for not more than five minutes, came back and she had chewed the mat. Like she, she got a hold of that mat and she chewed a little corner off of it. So that's the reason why they ride in the front so that when they're little, I can watch them. When they earn the trust, they get to go in the back. Um, I do occasionally bring a kennel with me when I'm traveling. Uh, but what I did was I actually bought so getting into brands of kennels, I use Rufflands. And so rough, they used to be called Rough Tough. I, I have some that are rough, called Rough Tough, but they changed their name. I think it's Rough Lands now. Um, I have, I bought a size that fits underneath my tonneau cover. So it's a little small, like I can get Cali into it and I can get, um, Spry can get into it. All my dogs can get into it. It's just, there's not a lot of space. I wouldn't make them ride in it for any long period of time. It's small enough to fit underneath my tonneau cover. And so I like that I bought those kennels for travel purposes because back to the idea of when do I kennel my dogs at night, my older dogs don't get kenneled up at night anymore. I still kennel Callie at night and obviously Chief gets kenneled. So that smaller Rufflin kennel, I think it's a size medium. It's either medium or intermediate. I'm pretty sure it's called medium, but one is bigger than the other. Whichever one is the smaller of the two, that kennel, is the one that will fit under my tonneau cover and that's the one that comes with me. And that one fits the dogs for quite a while because our dogs are a little bit smaller. So those will, those dog, my dogs will fit in there. The dogs I'm training will fit in there probably until they're close to the age where I'm probably not worried about, so worried about kenneling them up anymore. I can slide that Ruffland into my truck either on the seat or flip the seat up and put it down on the floor. And Chief will be in that pretty quickly because he's kind of outgrowing that cheaper one right now. So he'll eventually go into there. That one's real easy for me to move around. I put them in there just to keep their mobility limited and to keep them from getting into trouble. But as soon as I develop the trust in them um, from a little bit of maturity and a little bit of age and a little bit of understanding of their habits, they ride on the floor without the crate. So the I think the po important part of the question was, what do you prefer for traveling? And and to me, that's that's my go-to. Um, as far as the as far as the you know the crates and the kennels, when I'm not traveling, like behind me right now, I've got a Ruffland kennel that is the bigger one. It's pretty big. I, I don't think it's a large, but it's it's pretty good sized. Every one of my dogs will fit in there. I can fit two in there at a time. Um, we do keep that one in our mudroom, and that's usually for the dog that we're training. Whatever dog we have in for training that doesn't get to wander the house at night or have the potential to potentially wander the house at night or be on their bed, they go into that one. Now, the buzz about kennels is really big right now, and there's a lot of them out there, and there's, there's some that are really good, and there's some that I don't think are that good. Um, and then there's some that are, you know, kind of, you get what you pay for. And, and I think that from a cheap, kind of a cheap standpoint, there's some real junky ones. Like I've broken a lot of cheap ones in the past and I know the frustrations that go along with that. Um, there's some that are extremely expensive that I'm just, I'm really not that impressed with. Um, I've had, I've tried just about all of them. Um, I have not tried. There's a lucky duck has one out right now. And I saw one that, cause I see a lot of kennels that come. Um, we have workshops and people bring their dogs in the kennels and I see a lot of the different, it's interesting to see a lot of the kennels that come. The most common kennel to come to a workshop is a wire kennel that folds down flat. 
and I really don't like them. Um, they usually are the ones that they're a little they're they're a little they're less expensive. Um, they people buy them, and I, I'll, I they must sell a million of them because I see them really often, and the. It's usually people that don't typically kennel their dogs up. So they come into this workshop and I require someone, to, I require you to bring a kennel because we have to put the dogs up at times. And so you gotta have a spot to put them. And so a lot of people I think buy those wire crates or kennels just because they look at it and go, I'm only gonna use it for this workshop. Now, I think a lot of them leave the workshop going, I might get a different kennel or crate because that one doesn't work that well and I do see some value in having the ability to put the dog in it. The reason I don't think they work very well is because they're just too see-through. They're just, they're, they, you essentially, you're putting a dog in a cage and, and it's really hard on the dog. They see, it's, you know, they see everything. It's just like looking through a jail cell. And so for a dog that's never been in one before, especially, it's really difficult to ask them to settle down in them. Um, I do think that they're real easy to break out of. Um, if you've got a dog that, that does a little Houdini action, they will get out of those, I think, pretty easily. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. I, I think they're cumbersome. Um, they're a little clumsy. I, I just, I don't think they work real well. Um, that Roughland, again, you know, and I, I I have no connection to Roughland. Um, I've used, like I said, I've used all these kennels and this is the one that I really like the most. Um, I think it's very durable and I think it's very reasonably priced. Um, it lasts, I like the doors on them. Um, I, I don't put accessories on mine. I just, they're crates, they're kennels. I just put the dogs in them. Um, but they've, they've held up really well for me and I think the price, the value that you get out of them from for the price, and they're pretty available. Um, you know, I can. I think Cabela's Bass Pro sells them. I think Shield sells them. Um, you, they're pretty available both at retail, and I've ordered them, and I've ordered them directly from um, from their website. So the, you can get them. Um, Lucky Duck has a kennel that came to the workshop. There was one person that brought one this year, and I was really kind of interested in seeing it. Um, it's a little heavier than I thought it was going to be. It's it's not as heavy as a gunner kennel. A gunner kennel is really heavy. Um, I, I have had a few of those. I, they didn't. They weren't the bright. They weren't the right kennel for me. They just weren't. They. They. I wasn't real. Wasn't real impressed with some of the performance stuff. Um, it did not. It did not work well for for how I use them. Um, moving them around, it didn't work that well. They're just too heavy. And and I I get the safety part of it. Um, but I think what's interesting is is now I'm seeing more and more of these kennels. Um, you know, from a marketing standpoint, and I think it is very much a marketing thing. Talk about, you know, crash test ratings. And I'm looking at it and going, man, I get it. I, I, God forbid there's an accident, but I don't know that the, the I'm not going to gauge the value and, and put a price tag on it based on a five-star crash rating, because I think it's maybe just an independent company that's, um, it's like the toothbrush people that, you know, it's it's five stars. Well, they're all five stars. When you look at the toothbrush aisle, they all have five stars. And I think it's, you know, I just, to me, that's not the, um, the way I'm gonna go about making my decision. For me, it's performance, and then it's performance um, with, with taking into consideration cost. And I think they're equal to performing or maybe a little bit better at times, and they fit what we do with them a little bit better. So that is a preference thing, and that is something that, you know, I've not, I've not, I've not used the Lucky Duck kennel myself. I've seen one. Um, I have used some gunner kennels. Uh, what's the other ones that are out there? There's, um, there's like an impact one that's in a, a metal one. That one's a little bit overkill, I think, as well. I think it's called high impact, or, or something impact. Um, Trying to think, there's a couple other ones. Uh, Primos, I think, came out with one, or I, th I think they had one. The other thing that's, oh, um, there's another one called uh, Dakota. I've not seen those. Um, Dakota 283, I think it's called. I haven't seen those. I don't know if they're, I don't know, I, I can't really speak on those, I guess, because I haven't seen them. Um, but they, I know they've got, they're right, right there in the, in the marketing competition for all the kennel stuff. But, so Ryan asked this question about the kennels and that's, that's my stance on it, that's my take. I've had a couple people ask, ask about it. Um, it, it. 
more so like, hey, which one do you like the most? But that there's there is the answer to that. I think I hope I answer that question for you, Ryan, to let you know. Um, and I think I'm not telling other people how to travel. And I'm sure some people are going to listen to this and go, you should never let your dogs ride on the floor. I, you know what? You should never tell someone else what they should or shouldn't do with their dogs. I, I really think that that's a choice that I make. I get it. Uh, some people will disagree with it. Works really well for me. And so, um, knock on wood, I hope nothing ever happens to anybody else. And I hope it never happens to us as well. But that's the routine that I, I take. And I do travel quite a bit with them. Um, you know, that's the other thing I forgot to mention was, for me, the, and part of the reason why I do this is from a space standpoint, I can't fit. I've got four dogs. There's, I'm traveling with four plus dogs most of the time when I am traveling with dogs. There's absolutely no way I'm fitting all of my stuff because when I travel, I'm bringing a lot of stuff usually. Whether I'm going up to our cabin for the weekend or we're going to a show. We've got a couple shows coming up in August. We're going to be doing Deer Fest next weekend. We're going to be doing the Wisconsin Waterfall Expo or it's a Waterfall Hunters Expo, I think it's called. And I think we've got a white. Uh, Pheasants Forever event that we're going to be doing. So three out of four weekends in August, we're going to shows and doing some seminars. And I think for me to be able to go to those shows, we would never be able to fit everything we needed and uh, these kennels and we just, just doesn't work for the room. So I do like, which here's one thing that Rufflin doesn't have that I wish they did. And this is the cheapies that are nice. Um, the ability to nest them. Like, I think there's value in me able to break it down, put it in the back of my truck, put all my gear inside of it, and then when I get to my spot, put it back together quickly. So that I some sometimes I use the cheap. Um, one of them is a Remington, and it's just a private label kennel, but I, I think it's a Remington. It's branded Remington, but it's a private label knockoff one. But um, that one's really easy to pop apart, and I can I can shell it into itself, kind of lay it into itself, and then I put my bags or whatever inside of it. I can stack stuff on top of it. And then when I get to wherever I'm going, I can put it together pretty quickly. So I do see a lot of folks do that when they come to workshops. The kennels come broken down and then we put them together when we get where we're going. And I think that is, I think that's the case for a lot of people that travel and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So that's my answer on that one. It went longer probably than I, than I had planned, so let's knock it off. Let's call it a let's call it an episode, Ben. Um, I appreciate you asking the question, Ryan. I appreciate you guys listening. If you would do me a favor, I'm a broken record at the end, and I'm always asking, would you do please take take a little bit of time if you'd be willing to leave us a review, um, if it's if there if that's possible where you listen to this podcast. If you would do me a favor, share it with someone that you think it might help. Our our objective and goal with doing these is to kind of try to help as many people out there that are doing some training on their own. And the best way for us to do that is with your help, um, sharing it to those who, who it might benefit. So I appreciate it. I thank you guys for listening. I thank you for all your support. Um, we're getting close to hunting season, so I'm kind of excited. We've got some podcast topics that are going to be coming up regarding transitioning from some of the training stuff to some of the hunting stuff. I got a podcast that we're going to do about our pheasants because we raised we're, we're just now raising the final 200 of the 500 hen pheasants for the season. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about. So um, thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you soon.